Hey, David Charney from Illumin Group and eLearningLocker.com. I wanted to show off a little flip card system I've been working on in Storyline. As you can see, the card animates in, and when I click Next or Back, the card kind of flips forward or flips back. Uh, I haven't added any content yet, which will involve showing a different layer for each click uh, of the Next or Back button. Now, this might look familiar to flip card stuff or page turns that I've done before, but I tend to play these little video clips on a layer, uh, which makes that kind of effect occur. The problem with this is we don't have transparency or an alpha channel in the video, so the background is just usually white or black. And I want to be able to put any background image in the scene and not have to like even think about going into like something like After Effects and putting a new background image behind the graphic and then outputting that graphic or rendering that graphic out and then kind of making sure it all aligns with everything in here and it probably won't look as clear and uh, that's a pain. So for me to be able to just drop any image in the back and re uh, uh, publish the storyline file, that's, that's what I want. You can see the page flips w well above here so I can't contain it in some tiny little movie clip. So I'll jump into Storyline and we'll take a look at how I do this. So here we are in Storyline. I've got a, a couple of things. Uh, first off, uh, there's two different effects here. One is I've got a little animation of the card coming in the first time, kind of an intro. And then I've got the normal, as you go forward, it flips the page basically. And if you click back, it flips the page. And that's actually just one clip. And I'll explain that in a minute. I'm actually going to just first focus on the, the actual flip of the card instead of the intro flip. And that's actually what I'm, I'm on right here. So if I click on states, oh, this is intro. So let me go to that. I think that is this one here. If I click on states, what you're going to see is a whole bunch of states for this flip. So what I did is I had this flip and I went into Photoshop and I cut it all out and it was certainly tedious, but I can reuse this all over the place now if I want. So it's certainly a, an investment uh, to spend the time to do this. So I've got this flip now. You can see I've got a whole bunch of different states uh, all the way up to 32. Now I can come to here to my make it uh, ease flip. I've got see an intro and a flip. So the flip is the normal flip when you click next or back. So you're gonna see uh, I've got a current position. This is the variable that I use to kind of control everything. If current position is one, I want it to be on the first state. If it's on two, I want it to be on the second state. Three, four, five, six, seven, and that, that creates that animation. Um, so now, of course, I need to control that, and I'll explain that in a second, but you can see just generally, I'm going to actually click on one of these so we can take a look at it. So change the state of picture three, which is what I just showed you. That's the thing with all the states in it. Basically, a bunch of pings I output from Photoshop. So change the state of picture three to state five in this case. When the variable of current position changes, so every time this variable changes to whatever it changes to, trigger this trigger, trigger this trigger. Um, and then only do it if, in this case, the current position, that same variable, is equal to 5. So if it equals 5, run this trigger and make sure that the state of that picture is also 5. So I will hit cancel. How do I control that? I've got this little JavaScript command. And you can do this, you, you could do this in uh, Storyline. You could go to, let me cancel this, cancel. You go to animations, you could add a motion path. You could set it to, I think the lowest is like a tenth of a second. And you could set up a little trigger to say, hey, every tenth of a second, you know, add one to the current position uh, and then um, kind of restart the motion path. Uh, but the problem with that is it's, it doesn't quite time it's not my preferred method to time things now that I can use JavaScript. So if I go to JavaScript again, let me expand this out so we can all see it. And I talk about this in a little bit more depth in another video. But we've got a current position, we've got an end position, so I want it to end up on 32. I've got a little direction thing here. This is a 
This is how we get a variable from storyline, the direction. Uh, so I've got that as a variable in storyline. And when you click on next, it sets it to forward. And when you click on back, it sets it to backward. Uh, and then uh, if the direction is forward, then uh, set the variable to uh, the current position. So it's going to start at zero. I'm going to use the tween light engine, which is a kind of a JavaScript class. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, for the length of one second, I'm going to go from that zero to 32. And every time it's calculating and it, and it kind of updates the calculation, it's going to run this draw canvas, which is here. So there, I'm going to set current position in storyline because the set var is how you do that. Player.setVar is Articulate's way of setting a variable from JavaScript. So I'm going to set current position to equal whatever the value is. So it's calculating really quick. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's constantly sending that value to storyline. Storyline's looking at it and saying, oh, um, one, okay, I should show. Um, I should show uh, the the state one of this. Oh, oh two. Uh, okay, I should show the state two. Let's say it was like even figuring it out as it went. Oh, three. Uh, no, oh, it's on four now. Okay, I'll show four now. I won't show three, uh, five, six. And that's, it's, you know, you have a pretty good idea that it's keeping up with time, which is nice. You don't want to, based on a slow computer or a browser that's chugging, something that's supposed to take a second to take a minute because sometimes things have to be timed very accurately. So that's what's nice about this JavaScript, uh, the use of the JavaScript. So it will just run through very quickly all these, uh, where am I here? All of these guys here. And you'll get your little motion. Um, and then, of course, since it's all pings, I can just swap out this image. I can move it around. I can, I can do whatever I want with it. Now, I won't really show too much in intro, but it works the same way. Let me get back to the right spot here. Show this. States. So I've got this other background shape here, but you can see as I move through this, you can see these this quickly occur. So that's the intro. And when that gets done, I basically I hide this original shape here states hidden. So that will be hidden until it gets to uh, whatever the last uh, state is in the in the intro. And um, then it'll show that it'll show or, or it'll hide the intro. And as long as you just kind of align everything, you make sure that the the way this ends is the same as the way the next uh, flip card uh, begins, everything will look nice and seamless. And that's what we want. So that is how I put this together. So I'm finishing this up, but we will get this on elearninglocker.com as soon as uh, we can.